Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. <laughs> we have Sam J. Welcome. What's up? Welcome What's back. Up? I'm glad I'm here for this one today. I too. Yeah. So, yeah. first of all, you just talked about something on your show, Pause on HBO, that I was talking about on my podcast. That Uh-oh. people were confused about it's something her. sexual. If, if you was talking about it on her <laughs> podcast, it is you cuckolding. See? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And so we had um, a couple on, and he's a male dominatrix, but he enjoys cuckolding. Like he likes for his girlfriend to come in. Uh, you know, he likes to watch her have sex with other men and all of that. Yeah, there was a um, those people though that came on pause. They were a hot wife couple, <laughs> so he likes to. He likes to know his wife is having sex with other people, but he doesn't like to be, like, present. He want to see. Yeah, he don't want to, like, sit in the room, but he likes to, like, know that's happening and then, like, get the downloaded details after the fact. All right. That's wild. I feel like that's the next step, though. <laughs> the next step is, like, okay, now I'm ready see, to come right? in the room. I don't know, because he said how he figured out that he wasn't that was, like, the opposite. Like, he was in the room, and he was like, ah, nah. <laughs> then he went, like, downstairs, and he was like, uh, nah. And then he, like, <laughs> left the crib and he was like, ah, oh, yeah, I like this better. That's perfect for somebody who wants to cheat. <laughs> that's, I guess. That's, that's not. Right? I right. guess. I don't, I don't understand it. Like, I mean, maybe, you know, different things turn people on, but I could not see another person taking down my wife and me saying, tell me all the details. I like it. I, I, I don't see that. That's, not, I mean, at different, different shows for different there folks. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. So why was this on your show? Uh, Because I did an episode about cheating mm-hmm. um and really what i was exploring was just like the different forms of relationships and love and monogamy and what does it really mean are we living in western constructs are we putting ourselves in boxes and so i was like oh what's like the ultimate form of like i guess cheating but not cheating and i was like it's kind of this so i, I went and talked to them would you ever <laughs> do that in your relationship what a uh, cuckold, cuckold? Yes. no nah, i'm sure i don't i don't need that in my life <laughs> But you? how did cheating affect your relationship? How did cheating affect my relationship? Uh, it kind of like ruined it for a while. You know what I mean? Did you cheat? Yeah, I did. I did. And I had to like do a lot of self-reflection about why and what and what it was. And at first I was kind of a jerk about it. Like really, what's the big deal? You know, like kind of on that machismo joint of like, what's the big deal? I take care of you. Like, I don't really care about this person. Like, you know, I love you, but I had to mature to a place of like, it's about hurting another person. And mm-hmm. like, trust. if you, yeah, trust. And if you love someone, you can't be selfish and just indulge yourself without thinking about what it's doing to the person on the other side. Of you it. had such an interesting conversation about it on the show. It was funny to me because it's like all the things that guys say when they get caught cheating to kind of try to <laughs> justify it mm-hmm. and explain it away without just saying, okay. Yeah. But it's tough because a little bit of it is 50-50. You do mm-hmm. honestly truly feel that way. You, do, <laughs> you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like you do feel that way. Yeah. But it's kind of like you got to put that feeling on the shelf and go, I care about this person more than I care about that feeling. How'd you get caught? <sighs> Which time? Come on, bro. <laughs> I mean, you already, you already, you know, you said you're sorry, apologize Come and everything. On, so bro. How she don't want to relive this over and over. Man, I just, I was just being sloppy, bro. I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't on point. I wasn't on my pivot. I was moving crazy. Mm. <laughs> All right. And you've been so busy. Like, just, I was looking at all the different things that you're doing as a writer, creating shows, having all this uh, happening at one time. How do you balance that out? Because clearly, like, you have your own thing happening, but then you're also writing for other people, writing for SNL, writing on other shows. Well, I'm gone. I'm done with SNL. I've been gone for a while. Oh. Once I started Everybody Pause. Everybody left. <laughs> Once I started Pause, I left, you know what I'm saying, to just kind of really focus on that. I just feel like I couldn't be in two places. And, like, mm-hmm. Pause was, like, my first, my own show. And I was like, I just want to, like, give everything to that. But I, I am on a lot of projects. I, I, it's not really hard to balance it because I'm doing things I like to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm a person that just likes to stay busy. If I'm on vacation past four days, I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm kind of over this. Let, get me back, get, yes, let me get back to work. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't really, it doesn't feel overwhelming. So why the term pause, for people that don't know, I know you explained it last time. So for, you know, usually when somebody says some quote-unquote gay-ish, they Mm -hmm. say pause. Mm -hmm. So why the term pause? 
uh, just to be a jerk, <laughs> honestly. Mm-hmm. We just was in the writer's room throwing out names, and I was like, what if we call it pause? That might be funny. <laughs> and everyone was like, you think we could get away with that? And I was like, I don't think HBO knows what it means. They don't. <laughs> so, so they didn't know what it means. <laughs> and so I just picked it just to be a jerk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're in season two now, so how is Congrats. season two, you think, different from season one for you? Way more personal. Like you said, I did an episode about cheating. I did an episode about my brother going to jail. Mm -hmm. I just tried to, you know, kind of look inward this season rather than, I feel like last season it was macro and like the world Mm -hmm. and this season was like Sam and what's going on with me. Right. You you say your brother goes to jail. So in your family, are you the go-to person when everybody needs money? Kind of now, kind of, but I don't mind it. It sometimes gets on my nerves, but I like that I'm changing the legacy for my family. And I like that, like, at least now everybody don't feel like they got to struggle through something. You know what I'm saying? But it's a little different. Like, if somebody wants, you know, needs something for the house, that's cool. But if somebody get locked up, you be like, you know... Oh, yeah, no, I don't answer those calls. Oh, you don't answer those calls. All right, all right. Those are calls you don't answer. Your mama needs something. All right, mama, yeah. I got you. It's Christmas. You need a little extra. You know, your car the broke job. down. Car so... broke down. I'll help you. Word. I get locked up for doing some dumb shit. I don't answer those calls. You they know not to call me with that. Mm-hmm. You also had Kid Ken on the show. Yes, I love him. Me, I just had him on my podcast oh, yesterday. Oh, he's great. Yeah, so. I'm super excited for him. I want, I want all the things. I know. He has such a great personality. We were talking yeah. about him, too, with our camera guy over here, <laughs> Joey, Kid who works fan? with us. Yeah, I like him. All right. And then um, as far as also addiction, that's something that was personal for you that you uh, yeah. touched on as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is uh, this week, Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, Friday, the um, addiction episode comes on. We talk about, like, I kind of explore, am I addicted to alcohol? Because I've had a long relationship with alcohol. And I don't want to say where it lands, but... It's just an exploration of what is addiction, how do we really define it, our relationship to things, and when is that relationship actually addictive? Not talking about yours, because you want to talk about it on the show, but what do you call addictive? Because some people drink every day. Are they addicted to alcohol? Some people smoke every day. <laughs> we actually talk about that on the show, because I drink a lot. I probably drink every day, probably. You how know? many times? I don't know. I'm not counting. You but know in what Europe, I mean? They, in Europe, you they have a glass of wine. You don't, you don't know how many. Like, every time I took a glass of wine before I, I go to sleep, know. it calms me down. But if you say, I don't know. I don't know. Because, I mean, I'm at the com- I go do a comedy show. I might have four or five drinks. Jeez. If it's just like a chill. Four, four or five, five at a comedy drinks? show? Yeah. What are you drinking? But you're there. Tequila. Four That's what I drink. shots? No, like a drink, like a drink, like like on the rocks with an orange slice. You know what I mean? The orange slice. Four or five. Yeah, but I don't think I'm addicted. Yeah, but I'm. Not, I know I'm not addicted. You know, people who are addicted, the first thing they say is, "Is I'm not addicted." I know this is the whole thing we explore <laughs> in the show. But I, I feel like I feel like addiction is like when you don't have control over it. When you miss work. Cause when people, you don't have control mm-hmm. over it, and when it's controlling you, right? You do a comedy show without drinking. Yes, a hundred percent. I have. I do. Mm-hmm. It happens. Not often. Not just out of college, because, you know, colleges, they don't know how to look at the college. Like, that doesn't count. <laughs> that nah, doesn't count. it doesn't happen often, mm-hmm. but I can, and I do. Do I like it? No, I like drinking. I enjoy it. Is it like, am I drinking to escape something? No. I did at one point, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And I felt like that was, I was in a dangerous spot. Mm-hmm. And I stopped drinking for two years, because I was like, I don't I don't feel in control of this, and Got I don't you. feel like it's how are those two healthy years, for me. How were those two years for you? Great. Yeah. Clarity. You know, my mom had passed away when I was 16. I was going through a lot, and um, I was escaping, and I needed to take a minute to just feel stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What got you back to it if two years you were off? I like it. <laughs> you know what it, I realized is everything in moderation, right? Because I, like I used to drink a lot more than I drink now. Yeah. You know, and... I just feel like it just, I could see it on me. I think I'm going to grow out of it a little bit, too. So now I just am more, like, in moderation with what I do and also what I drink. Like, I don't really do mixed drinks. I'll drink, like, tequila on the rocks. Maybe I put a little seltzer in it. Mm -hmm. And then i also be like, okay, I'm only going to have, you know, two drinks. And I, like, give myself... you're at a two-drink minimum. Maximum. I mean, maximum. I'm like... (laughs) I, I don't have a cutoff yet. Yeah. I'm like, eh, when I when I feel like I'm drunk, I'll stop. Because it's also like a test of my own willpower, too. That's real. You like, know? sometimes I'll stop for, like, two weeks just to know that yeah. I can. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Do you smoke or no? Yes. I indulge myself, <laughs> baby. It's <laughs> a no judgment zone here. I'm like having a good time. Yeah, I so definitely smoke. you smoke and drink before you go on, on stage? Sometimes. Weed you, or cigarettes? Weed. I don't smoke cigarettes. Okay. Are you an argumentative? You know how d- p- different people act different when they drink, right? Like, I'm a fun drunk person, so I know when I drink, I'm going to be laughing, I'm going to have a good time. But some people get angry. Some people Happy get drunk. sad. 
Happy drunk. I hate angry drunk people. I'm a happy drunk. If it's not making you happy, you shouldn't be doing it. Right. If you're drinking sad, that's bad. That's what I say. They always say that you should drink when you're happy, not to get happy. That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm celebrating life. I'm I'm feeling good. What about shrooms? I do shrooms. Okay. Keep throwing them out. How often do you do shrooms? <laughs> How often do you do shrooms? Ah, that's probably like a once, twice a month thing. <laughs> now, what do shrooms do to you? Um, it's like a expansive high. I don't know. It just makes you appreciate the world it makes you appreciate life no because i never had shrooms but for some reason it makes me feel like it's like you just want to touch the colors when i think of shrooms yeah just i mean that's it kind of feels like that it's like mm-hmm. a super heightened like i don't know like you'll just be looking at a, a tree like wow god is good you know what i mean like this is crazy it depends <laughs> i so i've done shrooms um a few times and i think that i, I always say this you have to be in a good mood when you do it because if you're not in a good mood, it's going to heighten a bad experience. If you're feeling bad, it's going to make you feel It can worse. make you emotional. Yeah, but it, if you're feeling good, But it can also make amazing. you... Yeah, like if you feel good, <laughs> like you, it can make you sad, sad cry or super happy cry. I happy cry. Yeah, you know I happy I mean? cry one time. I couldn't stop crying, but I was so happy. Yeah, I've, I've definitely had that experience. And I was like, I wish I could write this down, but I'm not capable of doing that at this moment. I wanted to do it in Disney. You should have did it. I don't know, you know if that's it. I, I think you got to be someplace you know away from people. Because the, the colors are there. So it's like you go into the <laughs> thing and you're on the roller coasters and the colors. I just thought that would be amazing. It probably would have been super dope. But you should first time trip like in the woods or something. And not mm-hmm. around a lot of people. Not either. around a lot of Because you don't know how you're going to react to it. And how you long know? does it last? <laughs> few hours yeah well, and, so and when it's hours. when it's over it's like out of your system you don't have like a feeling like you're hungover or okay. not but you might do the next day yeah because it's like a poison because it's stomach. poison in your stomach and so your body's like fighting off the poison yeah 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 Some so people might it's like henny doodoo you know how you drink too much henny <laughs> watery <laughs> it's like a tequila shit <laughs> goodness gracious now how what have you wait, wait, learned before, before you oh. go that way any any anything else you've, you you tried? hey man hey, throw man. it out there throw it out <laughs> there i'm just curious <laughs> I do Molly sometimes. That's probably it. That's where I stop. Okay, good. Draw the, we draw the line in Molly. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are some things that you've learned where maybe you had a perception about a group of people and you changed your mind about them from the show? Because I know you had some black Republicans, some conservatives on there as well. So Yeah, what- the first season. I think... This season, actually, it was the white dudes in the woods. I was really... uh <laughs> Look at these woods, man. It's the second time you're mentioned these woods. What hey, do white dudes in the woods do? Uh, I was really shocked that they're... You know, I thought... I was like... It's a whole episode about race, and, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know, white dudes are, like, angry and, like, kind of spiraling out. I wonder, like, what's going on with them? And so we gathered a group of white dudes in the woods that I thought were kind of more radical mm-hmm. than they were, and I just wasn't expecting the accountability that came out of them um at one point in the conversation you know one of the dudes was like you could you could say you're not racist but are you really not racist and it's like a daily thing you have to do of like checking yourself if a black person cuts you off and you get angry you have to ask yourself where's this anger coming from and and like really be conscious of it Mm -hmm. and i just was really shocked to to hear them say that kind of stuff like out loud and you know I think they were shocked at how I felt as a person in America, and I didn't think that bridge would happen that way right. at all. And I was really like, I left the conversation like, whoa, this went in a whole nother direction than we thought it was going to go. Mm-hmm. But it was a good thing. I thought it was really great for the episode, but it was it was very interesting to turn it to. Did you stay in touch with any of them? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> just curious. <laughs> no, just, you know, for the moment. You know what I mean? I was going to ask, you know, we had Tink up here the other day, and, you know, Tink's doing comedy. Mm-hmm. So for, my first question before I ask you that one is, how do you feel with when you see people like Tank or your T.I.s or those type of people doing comedy? Because I don't care. I mean, I think some comics take offense to it because they're like, yo, they didn't like put the work in or, or they just coming in. And But I feel like comedy is such a like equalizer. The crowd's going to tell you what it is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like I was talking to my homeboy about this the other day and I was like, I don't know if you if you're really like a comic mad about T.I. or it's like how it's like I don't T.I. can't tell my jokes I can't tell T.I.'s jokes Correct. you know what I'm saying so it, how are you stepping on my toes like running your lane I don't I don't care now, now what about what we also talked about think about his worst show he said his worst show was in California and you talked about being booed and babyface was in the crowd what was your worst show do you remember it worst it's probably the first the first time I, I got up really in Boston I got booed I got booed like 
two seconds maybe into my set like I just started talking and someone from the back was just like boo like so it was like really hurtful because it was like you don't even know I'm about to say mm. you just don't approve of me like right, as, as a, a person, person. Wow. <laughs> I haven't even said nothing yet for real you was like nah I don't want to hear it did you, did you continue on or you yeah just... I'm here no, I mean, not, not, I mean, not there. I mean, during that show. Oh, oh nah. Like, nah, 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 nah. I was like, yeah, we good on this. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have any regrets about being that SMDK? No. <laughs> No, 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 no. She's a suck my dick kid. Yeah, no, no. What? That, <laughs> Explain that. Break it down. He was a down. badass kid. And he got to watch the show. I know, he got to watch the show. <laughs> Break that down. You a suck my dick kid. What the hell? You know, somebody was telling me that people from New York, that women are so disrespectful and that we are always telling guys suck my dick. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Somebody yeah. was telling me that... Um, it was OMB Peasy. He was like, y'all over here, you act different. Like He was like, he was arguing with a girl on the phone and she was like, man, suck my dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been told that before. I was. Uh, it's an episode just about Somebody's defiant. A celebrity actually told me that. <laughs> to suck your dick? Yeah, absolutely. Um, she, still oh. don't, she still don't speak to me, but go ahead. It's an episode about just defiant... <laughs> defiant kid i was just doing an episode about like i was a bad kid i was like always you know confronting the teachers i was i was a suck my dick kid like you told me to do something i was always like why no you know what i mean and just talking about that energy and where that energy could go and when you become an adult how that energy is a disservice to you but you also have to find a place to put it or you just become one of these people that are like screaming at people at the airport because you don't want to put on your mm -hmm. mask you know what i mean i'm like i don't know that those people are really on that as much as they just <laughs> are defiant and haven't found an outlet you know what i'm saying right. so it was just an episode about that and no i don't regret it i think it it made me the person i am today right because you, know? you terrorized some of those teachers though i, I mean, definitely yeah. did and that I, was, so that was actually, goals she actually <laughs> had the teacher on that got slapped by an eight-year-old <laughs> right and that was a crazy conversation <laughs> like what do you do she when an eight-year-old when you're a teacher and the student slaps you and yeah eight years old yeah he just took it uh, I don't know that I would have I would have to shake what him up or do? something. Because they teachers him. get in trouble you for stuff like that. Camera phones now. I mean, that's the last day at work, I guess. And the funniest part <laughs> is the kid was like, "I told, I warned you. I, yeah, yeah, I told yeah. you, it's your own fault. It's your own fault. I told you if you to get him to get him. Yeah, that's what he was like. I yeah. told you to tell him to shut up. <laughs> so that's why you got smacked. Yeah, I got to shake you. That's yeah. wild. I that... got to shake you down, little one. Did your mama beat your ass as a kid since you were that? <laughs> I didn't get beat a lot, but I remember the beatings I got. You know what I mean? I didn't get hit a lot. My mother wasn't really big on hitting, but a few times I got beat for sure. How do you feel the experience of writing for other people has um, helped you as a person now that has been developing your own shows and doing all of that? Like, did they come to you and say, look, we want you to do a show, or was this something that you said, okay, the ultimate goal for me is to have my own show? Um... Oh, I, I always hate these kind of questions because then you feel like you're like flexing. Mm -hmm. But no, nah, they came to me. Mm -hmm. um, that's and, good. No, and that's was real. Like, we we like you, and would you be interested in something like that? But it was also a goal of mine, so it was kind of mm -hmm. working in tandem. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Uh, writing for people, I mean, especially being at SNL, I I don't think I would have been able to make my own show without that education. It's just mm -hmm. it was just so much that I learned there. Um, I never had written before I got that job, so I didn't know how to do any of that. Stuff. How did you get that job then? In that I auditioned. I auditioned to be cast, and then they were like, hey, we really like you, but we just don't see where you fit on the cast. Damn. Do you want to write? And I was like, sure. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's all good. Yeah. I never even saw myself in the building, so it wasn't a huge rejection when they were like, eh, we don't know, because I didn't see myself on the cast personally. I was like, I don't do improv. What am I going to do? Okay. So it was like, I really think writing was better for me, mm -hmm. honestly, because I got to learn everything. And when you're on cast, I feel like you, you're you so into that that you kind of are into that. And I really got to be in the back and kind of learn a little bit how to produce, learn a little bit how to direct, learn how to write sketch. So I, I feel like I left with a lot of tools, and you, I'm, I'm you, grateful. You still like to write now for other people? Or do you um, prefer to keep things to yourself now? It depends on who it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wrote on Che's show. That's my brother. I love writing with Che. So it was... It was fun and cool, you know what I'm saying? It just depends on uh, who it is. Mm -hmm. I don't like like writing for award shows or like kind of more <laughs> of those tedious writing jobs. Right. But if it's like some creative junk and I'm, I'm kicking it with my homies, I'm super down. How is it having your fiance on the show with you? Because now she's pretty <sighs> famous from that. Sometimes it's <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's hell and sometimes it's great. You know, y'all got to be mean? together forever now. Uh, Everybody gonna be like, it's immortalized. No, people on do TV. that. Do people do mm -hmm. that? We had a rough summer again. I cheated, so we had a rough summer. <laughs> 
And you said again? <laughs> no, no, no. Like just not again. Come on, bro. You said again. I'm come just on, bro. Come on, come on. I'm sorry. Envy, be my brother in arms in this, brother. dog. Right. You could always flip it on him. <laughs> Go ahead, Thank you, exactly. <laughs> so, but uh, I saw someone in summer, me and my girl were out, and we this girl was like talking to us by the bathroom just like two weeks ago. And she was like, I know this is weird, but I love you guys as a couple. I was so hurt that y'all broke up, and I'm just so happy y'all are back together. And me and my girl were looking at each other like, bro, we never publicly said we broke up or anything. We just kind of wasn't like, you know, but they messing know. With each other, yeah. yeah, messing with each other. And it was like, yeah, and we were like, wow, it kind of hit us. Like, people are. Watching, Watch they your are. Life. Yeah, you got a responsibility now. Yeah, it's all blast. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I think if I cheated, somebody would like run up and hit me with a purse or something. You know what I mean? Like they're invested. Absolutely. When's the wedding? Um, uh, uh -oh. we don't really have a date date, but we're talking fall 2023 in okay. Atlanta. But we don't have like a date date. And then um, you also had a white woman on the show that you were talking <laughs> she to. She a white woman on the show. Like yeah, that. it was like a and random... You had a white woman on the show. <laughs> like I only had one ever. <laughs> no, but it was, the whole point of it was her being a white woman and also how like as black uh, women, we always take up for like our men. No matter what a guy, a black man does, you know, black women are like, that's our brother. We're going to Yeah, take... yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't see white women uh, returning the, or having that same energy for white men. I mean, oh, you're talking about the therapist. Yeah. This Call is, her a therapist. I'm sorry. She's I, a therapist. Okay, okay, she's a show. therapist. But she's I looked at her like, but she's a white woman therapist. <laughs> yeah, that one white woman on and the part show. And part of the point of it was that she is a white woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking uh, for the whole white we woman community. asking about like accountability because I, I don't know, I just feel like, you know, I grew up being taught to protect black men. You know, mm -hmm. I have a lot of black men in my family. I have two older brothers. And not in a like, they don't do any wrong, but in a just, you know, the world is harsh on them. And mm -hmm. so like, when black men go through things, like I used like the crack ep epidemic as an example, not to say black women didn't smoke crack, but it's just like, I just felt like that was a time where they were really trying to drag brothers down. But you mm -hmm. would always see black women like, no, this is still our brother. We gonna get him through this or, and as a community, we kind of galvanize around our youth. Like when we felt like it was so much gang violence, it was all these summits and conversations. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, these young white boys running in schools and shooting stuff up, yes, it's racist, but there's also a lot of other mechanisms at play because there's still children and there's a lot of manipulation that goes on there. They're on these subreddits and stuff with these grown men who are pumping their heads full of racism and telling them this is why your life is this and your life is that and you should do this and do that. And then when they go act out and do this crazy stuff, it's such a hands-off from the white community instead of a like, how do we get into these communities and help these boys or prevent this from happening. And it's just kind of like, what a crazy bastard. You know what I mean? And I was just like, why don't white women feel that allegiance in that way to white men? Because I don't feel like it's something I can do mm -hmm. because they're not my brothers. They're right. not my fathers. Like, you know these people. You know what I mean? So what do you think the reason was, ultimately? I think what she said was true. Like, ego, you know what I mean? Also not wanting to... If you get too close to it, then you have to uh, be responsible for it and just not wanting to associate with it mm -hmm. because it also makes you accountable <laughs> and a part of it. And I think that separation offers them what they feel is an advantage, you know, to be like, oh, but that's not me. I was going to ask, when, you come to, when it comes to your show, how do you decide where you're going to go, what topics, you know? Is it topical? Is it you have writers meeting? Is it things that just affect your life? Yeah, it's just things that affect my life. We we definitely leaned away from the topical because I just felt like there was a lot of shows already doing that. Mm -hmm. And to me, you can't beat Twitter. You know, it's like you're you're <laughs> you're chasing behind Twitter and it's quick and those subjects are getting run through a million times over. And so I was like, well, what's another angle? And we tried to keep it more evergreen. And I just talk about things that are important to me. You know, we throw it out in the room. And if everybody kind of latches onto it and has an opinion and mm -hmm. is interested in the conversation, then we're like, all right, let's just take it that way. How's your ego when it comes to something you're passionate about, but it doesn't stick in the room? Um, I mean, it's my show. <laughs> so, so, so if I say it, I'm so like, If I'm, if I'm so really passionate is. about it, we're going we gonna to figure it out. But I mean, I'm, I'm very much a team player. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't, we're all in it together. Everybody's names on the show they all have to feel good about what they're putting out because their name's on it. And it would be mm -hmm. like messed up with me to be like, no, nah, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like, nah, we all gonna figure this out and feel good about what it is that we're making. There's definitely things we've gotten into and 
someone's been like, I'm really just uncomfortable with this or I don't I don't like this or I don't think we should be talking to this type of person. And if they keep fighting for it, we'll fight till the end. And then it's like, all right, if you give me a better option, let's go with it because I don't ever want anyone to put their name on anything they don't feel good about. You ever feel like um, in the stand-up now, everybody's too sensitive? <sighs> the youth, the youth is interesting. I think they're... They are, I don't want to call them sensitive. They're reacting to the environment they've been given and they're young. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's, they're reacting how young people typically react, which is they go to the extreme mm -hmm. and they and they go to outrage very quickly and they don't take a lot of time to process and, and it's just like lying in the sand. You said that, you're a bad person. But I think that's indicative of just young people. And when you get older, you're like, uh, it's a lot more gray than it is black and white and you know because you just go through some life you know what I mean and so it's like nah I don't know they're just being kids and like <sighs> you can't really tailor your set to it you know what I mean mm -hmm. but I get it gotcha. right because I feel like with our parents what it was a different time when they were coming up and listening to comedy than it is then when we were coming up and now these kids have a whole other different way that they operate yeah and they're they're trying to change the world for the better for them you know what i mean like they're just dealing with the problems that trickle down that we left you know mm -hmm. sexism racism and they're just trying to figure out their way yeah because people will always say oh back then it was more it was acceptable to do this and times have changed so now you can't do or say this but i feel like in many ways times have changed for the better where people feel more empowered to speak out about things and uh, to feel like other people have experienced what they've experienced and that it's not right. Because there was this period of time when you just were like, I have to just deal with it. Yeah, this is what for the sure. world is like. If you want to be, I remember coming into the music business, they were like, look, you know, you have to be able to deal with guys are going to say crazy, inappropriate things mm -hmm. to you all the time. And if you can't deal with it, this isn't the business for you. Yeah, right. And it, and it's like a 50-50, right? Because I do believe some of that is the world. You do have to have a tough skin. Like, you can't control what people are going to do or say. You can only control yourself. But also, yeah, you got to fight for change and there mm -hmm. should be some things in place so that like we're crazy stuff isn't happening to folks. You know what yeah. I mean? And I don't know. It, it is a little bit like sometimes I do worry, though, because I'm like, <sighs> you can't make the world a perfect bubble, you know, no, you and sometimes can't. it feels like that's what it, it's pushing towards. It's like, right. don't say this because this might hurt this person's feelings mm -hmm. or like. Lizzo having to uh, apologize for saying spaz and like we had a whole some of this stuff is just that. like <laughs> some of this stuff is like bruh chill out you know what I mean and intention matters and like that, and that's my whole just thing. blowing your top over like everything if she if she's so meant reactive to hurt somebody I get it yeah but she's saying spaz like we always say he spazzed out like it wasn't yeah. it was, she wasn't trying to hurt anybody it was no just term and it's, but well, no, I, I that... said lame one time Ooh. I was like talking about something I was like yeah that's lame. And I got so many messages like, you know, that's ableist. Lame is a word used to describe people who have one, like a bum leg or done. <laughs> I was like, bro, no, we're not doing this today. <laughs> like, Get out of here with this. So like, you're still using the word. Of course. I don't care. I love it. Well, Sam J. Falls, <laughs> HBO season two. When can they watch it? How can they watch it? Tell them. Uh, every Friday at 11 o'clock, right after Bill Maher on HBO, mm -hmm. and then it goes up on HBO Max, and you can stream it whenever you want. That's but watch, watch it Friday it. at 11. Look, I always, I'm never home at that time, but I always make sure I catch it on HBO Max and binge watch. But I will, if it matters more, try to watch it. I don't know that it does. does it, I don't know, does it matter? <laughs> Because you're like, make sure you watch it live. I don't, I don't know, know that it matters. I don't know that it does. Okay. Well, good. I really enjoy um, the work that you do, so I'm glad that I was Thank able you. to be here and be here. I'm glad you were too. I'm glad I'm seeing Envy off a of screen. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> and what, eventually, all three of you will be One here day. at once. One day. For season three, we're going to have all three of us. <laughs> three. Three. That's a promise. I'm not coming back <laughs> if it ain't that way. Yeah, people have said that, and we've been trying to get them booked up here for months. <laughs> they tried. We yeah, he, it's Charlemagne's out there. Finally, that, Jim Jones and Manny were like, look, we'll take two two out of three. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sam J, check our show out tonight at 11. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.